Well, hello there. I just got done doing some little drone uh, racing practice down at the park. And I'll tell you, one of the most challenging things for me of drone racing at a park away from my house is charging my batteries. Here at my house, I can charge with a four bank charger, always balanced charging. Now at the park, the main thing is charging a lot of batteries quickly and also not having to haul too much stuff there. So today I'm gonna to show you how I do my balance charging at the field. Come on inside, I'll show you how. <laughs> this is the Q200 battery charger I use at my house while I'm charging batteries. The reason I use this is because it has four separate channels. I can charge four different types of batteries, four different sizes, no problem at all, and it works great. Now, to charge this, you have to use something like an AC adapter, and make sure you get the one that's made for your country, because I did not know how to find one of those. Or you can use something like this where it connects up to the battery in your car and then uses the XT60 connector to connect to the incoming port here. And that will allow you to use this at the, at the you know, out at the field while you're racing. The problem with this is just its <laughs> size. It, it's pretty big. This takes up a lot of room inside my suitcase and I didn't necessarily love using this one. This is the ISDT Q6 Plus. This is a lot smaller charger. Now, why would you want this? Well, because it's freaking 300 watts and 14 amps. It's huge. If you take a battery, you can plug it in here and you can put the balance port in here and it always balance charges your batteries and it can charge it ultra, ultra quickly. Now, why would you want to charge just one battery? Well, the answer is you don't. You want to charge a lot of batteries. But before we get to that, how do you power this thing? Well, it has to have power fed in through this XT60 connector. So, you, again, you can use a cable like this one. I had to make this little uh, adapter here to plug into this cable, and then that way it has the right connection going into here. But you can charge it that way. You can also take an AC adapter that has a high voltage output and a high amperage output, like, you know, what is it? I think it inputs up to like 24 volts or something. I'll put it in the tag here in the bottom. And then you can plug it into here and it can charge off of the wall. Or you could use another LiPo battery like this one. This is a three cell battery that I bought to power our TBS event tracker, but it charges with this just fine. So you can plug your battery or whatever power source you have into the input side and it boots up. Now, like I was saying, how, how do you charge more than one uh, battery at a time when you only have one port? Well, you buy something like this. Okay, now first of all, I don't recommend uh, charging your batteries without balancing them. That's what all these little ports out here are for. This is where most of the juice is going to go in through your XT60 connector and then these are the balance ports. So to connect this up to here, we just need to plug in the uh, XT60, take the balance lead here, plug it in as well, and boom, we're ready to go. So how many batteries can it charge at the same time? Well, you gotta remember amps are equal to watts divided by volts. And so for four cell batteries, you got 300 watts coming out of the charger and divided by 16.8 volts gives you 17 amps. So with 17 amps and a 1300 milliamp hour battery, that means you can charge about 13.73 batteries at 1C. But who charges at 1C at the field? Not me because all your batteries are gonna charge at about in about one hour. Instead, I usually charge about 2C, which is 2.6 amps. So I'm gonna put 17 amps divided by 2.6. You can charge about six batteries at the field, seven if you push it. And like I said, if it doesn't have enough amps, it'll just charge more slowly, and that's charging them at 2C. Here I have six different 1300 4S batteries. And when you're balance charging, the important thing is that all your batteries are all the same size. 1300s all across here, and that they're all four cell, and that they're all relatively close to the same voltage. Run your batteries down, we can hook them all up at the same time and charge them all together. But like I said, they all need to be 1300s, or 1500s, or whatever, as long as they're all the same, and they all need to be relatively close to the same discharge level. Before we get started, we wanna make sure that all the batteries are relatively close to the same discharge level. And again, I have six of them here, so we're gonna go ahead and check these. This first one, these are all fully charged. Okay, so that one is out of the picture because <laughs> he's charged up. I didn't think these were all charged. And we'll go ahead and check this one here. I put it on a charger. And that one looks a little bit better. That's those, All those cells are about 3.7-ish. So this one is a good candidate to charge. This one is mostly charged. We'll skip that one. 
There's another one that's like 3.7, 3.8. So this is a good one that to use to balance charge with. This one is also good. It's coming in about 3.7 each on each of those cells. And this one's coming in about four, so we don't want to balance charge this one. When we go to connect these batteries to the balance board, it doesn't matter which XT60 you connect to because they're all connected together inside because this is a balance board. And it doesn't matter which one of these XT of the little balance ports you use either, again, because they're all connected together inside. So we're going to connect these batteries up here. Again, it doesn't matter if you hook them up on this side or the other side. The best way to the best place to put it is the place where it can reach. Now with all the batteries connected, we can look at this screen and we should see that all of these batteries universally are coming in about 3.7, 3.8 volts each. And again, I'm powering this off of my three cell battery over here. So <laughs> hopefully it goes well for this demonstration. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna charge these up. Now the, uh, now the current here is, this is how hard we're gonna charge them. Now with 1300 batteries, the current should be 1.3 if you're charging one. However, in this case, we're charging three of them, so we can take 1.3 times three, and we can get 3.9 amps. So we can safely charge 3.9 amps. But if you wanna charge 2C, then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take this and we're gonna crank it on up to about uh, 7.2 amps. And that should put us up about 2C on the charge rate. The nice thing about the ISDT Q6 Plus is that it figures out a lot of this stuff for you. It already knows that this is a LiPo battery in 4.2 volts and it's also a 4S battery. So like I said, we're gonna go ahead and put it there at 7.2, come back down here to start, and I'm gonna push this, and now we're off to the races, right? Yes, there it goes. All right, so it's cranking up how many amps are being output, and it's also counting up how many milliamps are being pushed out. Now again, this is kind of filling up all the batteries at the same time, and that's why it's important that all the batteries are relatively close to the same size because you want them all to charge up at the same rate and when one is charged, the other two or however many other ones you have are real close to being charged also. If you try to charge one battery that's fully charged on here, he's gonna stop the pro he's probably gonna stop the process of this thing charging and you'll see the amp go way down and he's just gonna, it's gonna go real slow. You don't wanna do that. You wanna make sure all your batteries are relatively close to the same size and the same discharge level. Not the same, they need to be exactly the same size and relatively close on the discharge level. Also down here, we can start to see these cells are actually starting to go up now. They're all above 3.8 now instead of 3.7 like they were when we started. In the case of these batteries charging, you gotta remember that the three cell battery here only has 5200 milliamp hours in it. So you can't charge more than about four or five batteries off of this. And the reason you can get away with four or five is because when you discharge a 1300, chances are you didn't actually pull out 1300 amps. You probably pulled out maybe a thousand amps out of it. So you got about 5,000 here, 5200 in this uh, charge in this battery to be able to push back over to here. You are going to have some battery or some amp hour loss up here because of the charger and the way it's, it has to convert the power to charge your batteries correctly. But this should be a pretty close guide. You should, if you have a 5200, you should be able to charge about four or five batteries that are mostly discharged. The charge is still pushing a lot of amps into these batteries, so that's good. We'll go ahead and we'll scroll down on this wheel, one click, and it comes down here and shows us the internal resistance on the batteries. If you're a good battery guy, you know what this stuff means. I don't know what it means, so we'll go on down to the next screen. This here is telling us that we have about 11.2 volts going into the charger and we have 15.6 volts going out of the charger. So that's good. It also get, it's monitoring your, in, your input voltage and it also knows that this battery uh, is a three cell and so it knows when it gets down to so many volts on the battery, it should stop charging the batteries and, and take, hopefully save the input battery that you're using to charge the other ones with. So what happens if you wanna charge more than six batteries at the same time? Well, you get another balance board. And the nice thing about these balance boards are they have two ports back here. One for incoming, one for outgoing. And it doesn't matter which one you use because, like I said before, they're all connected. So you take this balance lead, plug it into this balance board over here, take this XT60 connector, plug it into any open XT60 connector on here, 
and bazoo bazing bazinga all the all the uh, pins on here are connected to all the pins on there and like I was saying the pins are actually really are all connected on here this did not look like they did a very good soldering job on this one but up here the uh, positive comes in comes up through this fuse and then from here it comes down and feeds all the positive leads across that side down here all the negatives are connected together and also if you look here closely you can see how all these balance leads are all connected together. It comes down here, it kind of circles around and goes back up the other side up here to all the pins that go out to the boards. And if we look at this, you can see the pins here are actually really are connected together. So it doesn't matter which one you use for incoming or outgoing because they are all connected together. This one has that, it looks kind of crappy right there. That's, it's fine. It was just a little bit of goop that got stuck on there. So this is what the inside of the balance board looks like. Like I said, they're all just connected together, so it doesn't matter what you connect where. So but if you have a lot of batteries though, the one thing you gotta start worrying about is overdrawing the amperage off of this charger or off of your incoming battery. And make sure your battery doesn't get hot. In this case, it's not even warm. In this case, the little fans run like crazy, but it's not burning up. And the batteries themselves, they're all doing perfectly fine. So after you build a little confidence in how fast you can charge these batteries, I think I'd feel pretty safe leaving them outside uh, while you're at the flying field flying. Now I wouldn't necessarily leave these alone inside your house while you're, while you're uh, charging, but then again I'd say that with any kind of batteries charging, I always make sure that I'm at least in the next room over or that I can keep it in some kind of visual line of sight when I'm charging. All the cells in the 4S batteries are now over 4 volts. So this thing is still pushing out seven amps. And seven amps sounds like a lot, but you gotta remember it's really divided by three because I have the three batteries hooked up over here. And if I had six, it'd be divided by six because they're all pulling juice off that charger. And again, none of these batteries feel hot. If you leave them in the sun, they probably feel hot because of the heat. But this battery over here is getting a little bit warm. I can feel a little bit of heat coming off of it. But then again, it, is, it does have a high amp draw off of it. Now you'd probably be better off instead of using a three cell 5200 like I have here, it'd be better off using something like a four cell or a five cell that is just enormous. That way it can have a high amount of amp output and not slow down the charger. So at this point, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna stop this charger. Go ahead and hit the button here and we're gonna go to, to stop. And there it stopped the battery charging. And I'm gonna go ahead and pull these batteries off and we're gonna check them and they should all hopefully be around 4.0 volts. We'll go ahead and check this first one. And these cells, give it a second to settle down. 4.01 and 4.00, that is excellent. All the batteries are very close to the same voltage. All right, let's check this next one. Give it a second to settle down. All the cells are 4.0, 3.99, 3.98. Again, that's very good on the charging. And we'll check this last one. Hopefully it's all, hopefully they're all close to the same as well. Oh my goodness, they're even, they're pretty good. 3.956, give it a second to settle down. 3.96, 3.95, and 3.94. That is very good. This one is a, probably a little bit lower because it was probably a little bit more discharged than the other two were. And that's why I was saying it's important that all your batteries are about the same level when you go to charge them. After you've flown them, hopefully you've flown them all about the same, you put them on a charger and it can balance charge all of them and it's gonna bring them all up at close to the same uh, pace, which is important that they're all close to the same voltage. So this is the Q200 that I use at home, and I use this one because it has the four independent channels to charge batteries at different charge levels, different sizes, whatever, it can do four different ones all at the same time. At the races, I'm mostly flying 1300s or 1500s, so as long as I charge all those together on this breadboard or this balance board using this ISDT Q6 Plus, we should be fine as well. And this is um, my new favorite, mostly because of its size, it fits in my suitcase, and this is about all I have to take with me other than a battery to, to charge off of. Oh, and it also comes in a box, looks like this, and it comes with a couple XT60 connectors that it, you can use to uh, make your own cables if you want, in case you don't have any XT60 connectors. It's kind of nice I didn't use them. Uh, and I was also using this ISDT battery checker. Why the ISDT battery checker? 
because I got an ISDT charger. That's why. All right, so if you have any questions about this, you want to tell me I'm wrong down in the comments, I would love to hear it. I try to respond to most of the questions I get asked. If I don't answer, it's probably because I don't know the answer, and I'm hoping someone else will answer. Anyway, leave your comments down below, and as always, thank you for watching. I got three coming through right now. Dude, I already three. Got one. I'm landing and everything. What you talking about, Willis? I'm doing four. That's how good I am. Whatever. I was wrong.